this is Marvin Glotfelty giving you another MGWA industry connected video. Today, the topic will be well abandonment. And so that's what it is legally called in Arizona. But just to be clear, other places, other states have legal determination. Actually, abandonment is a bad term for it, but it's what's in our Arizona regulations. Um, the uh, more appropriate term would be decommissioning or destruction. And that's what it, it is called, I know, in other states. But regardless, we're talking about a well is old, out of service, going to be replaced or just not used anymore. Um, and uh, and it, it varies what we do on a state by state basis. So you have to comply with that state's rules. So but you also want to apply proper industry standards, common sense to achieve the goal. So the goal is that that well that will no longer be used, perhaps there'll be a building over it, perhaps there'll be another nearby well that'll be operating. You don't want that well to have a detrimental impact in the future, and it can. So a deep well, um, in my area, wells are commonly un, 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 not unusual at all to be at over a thousand feet deep. And so there's a lot of different strata that are penetrated and they won't mix with one another out in the aquifer. So let's say it's an area with historical farming, so you maybe have high nitrates in the upper part of the aquifer. That's all fine because it's going to, that nitrate, the associated chemicals are going to stay in that upper strata it, until they get to the well. Then they will travel vertically with ease. So that's the problem with the old existing wells. Uh, it's possible to just weld a cap on them, but you haven't done that destruction then. It still remains in the subsurface and has the Im impacts that it would have. So it's important to keep that in mind. So we, uh, we want to always find out what we're dealing with with the well. A lot of times older wells don't have very good records. And so we might have a driller's report from the 1940s or 1930s or 1950s. And it'll have some information, but is that what's downhole now? Or have there been liners? Will there be collapses or debris in the well? Uh, all kinds of different things can happen and do happen. So it's always a good idea to do a pre-abandonment uh, video of the well. Document very well what's there. Um, note if there's, uh, if you come to a fill level or collapse, you don't know what's below that. It could be just, Sediment fill may be fill from the bottom up, or it may be a little bit of sediment that's accumulated on a bridge or a collapse. And so if you don't know, you have, you're have you either willing to take the chance or not. So depending on whether you're in a environmentally sensitive situation, whether there could be contaminants that'll cross migrate or not, that will determine whether you're going to do more and maybe actually clean out that sediment and then re-video the well. Um, in my early career, I was involved with a uh, well abandonment job that was large, uh, involved 44 wells across a township and range. That's 36 square miles. So it was a large farm that had been acquired and was going to become a residential neighborhood. So the buyer did not want to have liability for the older wells. That's why we were abandoning all these old unused agricultural wells. There was plenty of wells still active. We weren't looking at those, so these were old, old wells. And going through 44 wells, it was very instructive to me. So I learned a lot during that. And um, one, uh, I'll, I'll share a couple of instances that happened during that uh, project. One of them was we were in the Phoenix area. That's unconsolidated alluvium, not hard rock. And so we had a, a well that was about over 30 feet away from an active pumping well. But we thought, well, you know, they're 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 far apart. Um, you know, they're they're not in communication, so we can add our cement to this one. And so we backed up the cement truck, but just put a little dab in, you know, maybe a quarter of a cubic yard of cement, and just to see, because that other well was not only active, but it was currently pumping. The time delay from when we added the cement to when gray water came out of that well was zero it was immediate and so we knew we had to contact the owner and say 
we can abandon them both or we can abandon neither one. So we abandoned neither one. That one we kept because that was in, there was a, some sort of a cavern, a direct communication, immediate communication that happens in the earth. How, how would you do that in unconsolidated alluvium? It's hard to understand, but it's real. So we know that for sure. So, so that's impressive how, how things can happen. And rather than just be surprised by a bad result, you need to take baby steps and be careful along the way. Uh, we also know that um, wells are not exactly plumb in a line. They can drift horizontally 40, 50 feet in some cases. So if you're going to put a new well near the old well or have some infrastructure that is subsurface like that, a gyroscopic survey or some sort of plumbness and alignment test is, is important too because when, even if you abandon that old well, there's still an impact. You're, you're going to go down there, you're going to put in cement seals, bentonite seals, all kinds of different things. So that's important. And the other thing that's important from a liability standpoint is that if there's bad stuff in a well, you clean it out. So, you know, um, when there's nobody around, people throw things down a well thinking that they're, they will never be caught. You know, maybe old trash or, or uh, cans of uh, chemicals or things like that. Um, animals can fall in there, so you can have, uh, unfortunately, you know, dead animals, and that's a bad biologic impact. So, so uh, and then people, you know, kids love to throw rocks and, uh, and post, wooden posts down wells and things like that. They sound really cool, but it's a mess when you're trying to clean them out. Um, and one of those wells at the, uh, the same project with these 44 well abandonments, um, was known to locals as the doctor's well. Ooh, you know, like, I hope you listen to this around Halloween. It's scary. You know, uh, the doctor's well, this is a true story, was a well that the locals said uh, this local doctor had thrown stuff down there. And uh, the, of course, there was, there was no dead babies, thank God, you know, but um, we were worried about stuff like that because we came, we, we, we videoed this well and came to uh, materials and it turns out this is a 24 inch diameter casing, two foot diameter, filled with 400 vertical feet of biohazardous waste. Now that's about over 46 cubic yards of pill capsules, um, cloth wrapped stuff, uh, syringes. Um, there was a file cabinet drawer uh, full of paper, all thrown down there, drawer and all. There was liquor licenses. There was this this guy. We got envelopes with the doctor's name on it. He was old and retired, but it was, um, I had, uh, when I pro provided my report on this to the Department of Environmental Quality uh, in Arizona, I drove, I drove it down there. I came back to my office and uh, the state attorney general was on the phone waiting for me. So they were gonna go after this guy. But it turns out that didn't make sense. You know, he was old, he was retired. It would have only, we had cleaned it up. And so that was good. But um, biohazardous waste, I guess, is a recro waste. That's one set of rules in environmental law. But all of it also had PCBs contaminating it. That's a Tosca waste. So we had multiple different, so we had to subcontract a doctor and an industrial hygienist and all these things. Well, who expected that? That wasn't in the budget. That wasn't in the scope. That wasn't in the plan. But this is an extreme example of what you can bump into in older wells. Do you leave it in the ground? No, you don't. You got to clean it out. You got to document it. You always want to GPS that well site because you're going to you're going to probably um, cut off the casing below grade, have a nice smooth place there. You'll never know where that well was. You'll build something on top of it. Maybe there'll be a fiber optic cable go right over the top of it. Who knows? But you want to know where it was for future documentation. So GPS that well. Um, so abandonment of wells is not always a requirement, but it's always a good idea when they're out of use, out of service, because they can have detrimental uh, impacts, as you can easily imagine. And of course, we know there were stories where people have actually fallen in wells, and that's a terrible thing there. So you never, ever want to leave an open well. So with that, Thank you very much and stay safe out there.